Okay, our next guest is from Citrus. Have a seat. Tarkan Kachuglu? Yes, Tarkan Kachuglu. Okay. Welcome to theCUBE. We are here in live, uh, Director of Services Development Worldwide Consulting Solutions. So uh, first off, um, describe the scene for the folks out there who are, uh, aren't here and can hear the noise in the background. So Citrix has been uh, helping customers with virtualization and cloud for some time. Obviously you guys power open source clouds. What are the top three things you hear from customers around uh, deploying the cloud? What do you do at Citrus? What's your job? Uh, I'm in the Citrix consulting team, and uh, my main background and role is actually uh, marketing consultants. Um, especially in the current role, I'm looking into like how we can like, grow our services business. It means like what kind of offers can we offer, uh, especially like customer has demands to kind of get help with this virtualization cloud. How has the services business changed over the past few years? Obviously, cloud has changed the deployments, the kinds of services, the consultancies. Uh, roll out a kind of a new a new breed of consultancies emerging cloud consultancies. So you have some new players, and then you got the big players like CSC and some others out there. What's changing in that business model? Getting more and more important, and uh, looking into that, we touch much more in means of, uh, in the RT architecture from the network security and uh, storage. So we need to broaden that part of knowledge and uh, really consider to kind of provide the service the customer needs. Anything in the business model from your customers that have changed? I mean, we talk to CIOs all the time. Our, our research firm, RickyBond.org, our partners, they do a lot of research with CIOs, and we're hearing from them that their business models are changing and that they're asking the vendors and or consultants to change with them. Are you? What are you seeing on that side of the house? Um, they ask much more from the business perspective. Uh, it's not this solely, let's say, professional service where we're going to go into like, providing technology or technical knowledge, uh, but really guidance in means of defining the strategy, like how business and IT aligns very well together. Um, and aspects are here, for example, like looking to uh, business models, savings, um, uh, security guidelines, especially also with all the virtualization flexibility, being agile. I mean, today, many, many organizations have changes, uh, acquisitions, and with that, they need a totally different approach in IT. We're here from SiliconAngle.tv and the Cube on the ground live at Citrix Synergy 2011, San Francisco, California. We're here with Citrix talking about services and consulting. Um, has the relationship between the vendor, hardware vendor in particular, changed over the years? Um, between the, the vendor and the customer? Where it used to be a big deal, you were an HP shop, you were an IBM shop, you are uh, you know, Oracle shop. Has that changed? Are they more commoditized? Has virtualization changed all that? Um, that's a good question. I, yes, it, it is moving more into, I think the customer wants to have like a complete solution. So having all the hardware vendors, I mean, uh, there's a good hardware vendors out there, customers have uh, the opportunity to leverage, uh, but it's really getting into the direction that they want to leverage like a one-stop solution. So meaning like having with the software designed accordingly to kind of really fit into the hardware solution as well. You know, everyone in the blogosphere, obviously SiliconANGLE is the leading uh, source tech blog for emerging technology, siliconangle.com. Uh, you can find it there for the folks out there. You know, bloggers love to say things are dead, you yeah. know. That's a great headline on blogs. So, you know, we've been talking about the desktop, the physical desktop is dead. Um, and, and that seems to be a theme of virt virtualization, especially desktop virtualization that, you know, the role of the desktop was a liberating concept 20 years ago, yeah. empowering people to do their jobs with productivity suites, Microsoft. 
is the virtual, is the physical desktop dead? The idea of a big, fat, bloated PC, people chained to their desk, it's a, it, it conjures up an image of like, really a poor work environment. So is that notion dead? I would say no, not today at least. Um, I mean, there's so many, let's say, challenges that need to be fixed. I mean, for sure, virtual desktop gives you the flexibility you need or organizations are looking for, just from a management perspective. Um, how do I roll out quickly, let's say, my new application update or source packs and things like that? But still, I mean, you have your tablet, you have your iPhone or like any other device, um, but I think if you want to work like fully, you still need some like bigger device. I mean, you can do the thin client, but I, I think the point where you need the bigger thing is probably your laptop. I mean, either you have a local install or like for example, you can virtually hi type one hypervisor to kind of take your virtual desktop with you. But uh, I think there is still work to do to get really, let's say, decouple the desktop from the uh, hardware itself. So kind of a philosophical question for you is, the iPhone changed the mobile landscape forever and since the iPhone was launched, we've seen Google race in with Android. The smartphone market is now legit, fully growing like crazy. Big battlefield there. And certainly that was on the IT's radar. So they stand, a lot of them standardized on BlackBerry. Um, but we're saying at SiliconANGLE that it's the iPad that has changed the game. So the question for you is, in the enterprise, how much has the iPad changed the game in IT? from being tech jewelry to a very sexy deployment for CIOs, so it's eye candy on one hand or tech jewelry on the other, to actually a real bona fide platform. Has that, how has the iPad changed that, if any, from your perspective? Um, I think it started off, I would say, um, I mean, you had always like email access, at least with your phone, um, and then you had your laptop. Uh, now looking into, like, you want to have some type of information in between. Um, it, we had the netbooks still out there, but I think the tablet... Yeah, netbooks kind of ho-hum, didn't really do much. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, it, I think it turned, uh, or like the tablet PCs, I think it turned into really this uh, easy to handle um, tablet and portable, and especially I think a, a good user scenario is like um, thinking about not only the managers like CIOs, but also like uh, the healthcare area, where this is makes it more flexible for, let's say, the doctors to carry around the information and things like that. So I think it, iPad threw in a new device scenario, which probably was there to some degree, but uh, never w reached probably the simplicity they, they kind of provided, and I think it's a new trend there. What about the uh, real-time aspects of analytics and big data? Are you hearing a lot of customers talk about big data and analytics and real-time? Um, you mean like? Yeah, reporting, data re warehousing, business intelligence, those kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 once it's centralized, for example, in our case, um, it is being leveraged for exactly like that because you, your application, once centralized, sits very close to, to the source, meaning the back end. So that definitely speeds up the process of getting to your data instead of like pulling it from the data center towards your client. We're here at SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, the worldwide leader in emerging tech coverage. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle. We are here at live at Citrix Synergy in San Francisco, California. This is theCUBE, our flagship telecast where we go out to the events, extract the knowledge from the guests, share that with you, and we're here live talking to Citrix about some of their big announcements and some of their changes. Here talking with uh, Tarkhan about services. Um, so the question about Citrix, as a company, you guys have been pioneering the desktop. How real is VDI and desktop virtualization? Are we just on another rev of virtualization on the desktop? Is it real this time? It is definitely real. I mean, just to give you an example, um, what we built here is from a service perspective is with our partners, Cisco, Dell, NetApp, and EMC and McAfee and other Citrix Ready partners we have here. Uh, we actually want to show that how real it is. We have a data center on site behind glass walls. People can see it. And uh, to kind of really s show actually it is real, um, people can come and use any device they have and try out the virtual desktops we provide them. We built them for them, optimized with all the applications they need, and they can try it out. So it's really touchable, experienceable, it's there. You know, we covered last week, um, or as EMC World two weeks ago, we covered the Microsoft acquisition of Skype. 
Yes, so obviously Skype's got a huge install base, 800 million people registered. Microsoft's, you know, hurting, um, you know, been reeling for over the years. Actually sucking wind, as we say, but uh, you know, that's a kind of a desperation move, but it unifies them. You guys have go-to meeting and have these apps that, you know, literally over 100 million people have used at one point. I mean, you're there. So, like, video collaboration is not new to you. So, how is the collaboration market and the work you guys have done over the years, how has is, how is the advances in virtualization and cloud changed Citrix's abilities? In means of the collaboration? Yeah, just in general. Uh, the app stores are now nomenclature in, in business parlance where you got, you know, people, yeah. the SAP launched an app store last week for enterprise apps, uh, and they might even be able to compete with Microsoft, who knows? We were speculating that. I mean, Citrix seems to be in a good position, if this plays out, to really go in and change the, the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I think just starting from the application virtualization perspective, I mean, where we are coming from, um, I mean, we have definitely a good understanding um, how it is being done applying it to the desktop virtualization. And the other important areas, I think, especially with all the, that's a device we talked about, like tablets, phones, um, the user experience is getting uh, very, very important. It's not just the IT. And I think there's a strong force or m a change within organizations that users actually drive what IT needs to support them. And uh, just concerning that, I think it just changes give, the game. Give some examples of that, because we were talking before we started about, and with Simon about, this is an, uh, an, a user experience computing paradigm, where the user experience is at the center of it, they're driving the change. Can you give some examples of, of the end user experience really dictating IT? Yeah, so again, I mean, as I said, we're showcasing here on the with our data center, and we don't give anyone coming here to experience the desktop. Uh, we don't give them any device, so they can use their own device. Showcasing, actually, you can bring it to your organization, and uh, let's say if it aligns with security guidelines, sure, you need to consider. You can use actually any device, so the user has the choice, uh, which makes I think the work environment easier. Uh, some people like a Mac, some people like a Windows. So things like that, I think that's what I mean. Like the user has a choice now what they should use to work. Okay, so I guess the question is, is that on a scale of one to ten. 10 being totally ready, zero being screwed up. Where are your customer base at in terms of adopting some of the new technology you're talking about, virtualization, desktop applications, you've got all kinds of cool products on the, on the, on the personal side with GoToMeeting, you've got these things like receivers, you've got the new OpenStack stuff going on. So you're kind of bridging the people and the personal side with kind of private hybrid clouds and then you got a lot of public cloud. Where's the marketplace on the integration of all those? Is it a three, is it a two, is it an eight? Where's the readiness on the clients? That's you can be honest now. Yeah, I can be honest, okay. Yeah, don't, um, don't give us a Citrix uh, <laughs> So I, I, I would say I see, let's say the, the organization between five and six, just I think, I, I know very, still Why customers is that? out there. Why have is Windows? that? No, uh, I, I know still a lot of customers who don't do any virtualization. Or if anyone virtualize, maybe they virtualize applications. And uh, as I said, it's it's a new move. I mean, we hear from all analysts, this will be the market, this will be here in, in 2014. Um, so there are still a lot of things to do. And I think the adoption, will, personally, I think it will take time, especially with the cloud. Um, cloud is new, and I'm sure anyone you ask here, you will get different, um, let's say, definitions of cloud too. And uh, just taking that. What's the number one? What's the number one reason, or what number one request you're hearing from customers? It means of like, in terms of their needs, their biggest problem. There's always one room on fire. You know, is it licensing? Is it cost? Is it like a new feature? It's it's uh, probably for now. I mean, like uh, especially after Christ, the cost. Cost is one one point. Uh, security is another one, and uh, the other thing, especially like with changing business. Uh, Quickly, they want to be flexible. Those three items I see the most coming up at customers, where they want to go. What about this emerging segment around small, medium-sized enterprises? Because that seems to be a really hot, growing segment. We heard a lot about it at uh, SAP Sapphire last week. Um, you guys are um, going to be announcing some things in that area. Why is this area growing so much? Because they're a perfect fit to leverage the cloud technologies, or just an underserved market, all of the above? What's your opinion on that? Um, the small, medium, 
business is, in my opinion, uh, a big business area which wants to kind of benefit also from enterprise technologies. Um, today, I mean, think about like the um, coolest technology, the new server hardware, the newest technology is usually in enterprise areas. It is it is not easy to adapt in the SMB market. And uh, even though, like, let's say, if you look at the large enterprise, the revenue piece or contribution overall to the economy is large, but the SMB, just the amount of SMB we have out there is just um, immense. I mean, and that is not covered. So today with the technology we have, the cloud and things like that, I think SMB market gets an opportunity to join the enterprise type of, let's say, technologies. Um, and cost-wise, it is also getting very reasonable. Okay, we're here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, your reference point for emerging technologies. We're putting out hundreds of blog posts a week. We have analysts, we got research, we got data. We have theCUBE, our flagship telecast, where we go to the events and talk to the folks on the ground, get the knowledge, share that with you. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate it, good luck with your services and your consultants and all the, your army of uh, services. Thank you.